Hi guys, Asmo here and today I have for you a complete guide for Heist updated for the 319. Heist has become very very profitable even more than before because of all the nerfs to the loot to the drops from monsters and because Heist is pretty much entirely picking up stuff from the chests. Heist has remained unnerfed and the, for the most part there has been uh, a fewer uniques dropping from the smaller chests but that is kind of also a buff because more often you're going to be finding other things that are more valuable than a random unique. So I'm first going to talk about regular heist and then a second half of the video or rather the end part of the video is going to be dedicated to the infinite heist strategy which is something that you want to do at the league start. So first let me talk about how do you get started with heist, what do you need. Uh, first of all in terms of the character choice, in terms of the build choice that you want to uh, use, I would definitely recommend a fast build. There are a few requirements that you want to be looking at when you're picking a build for heist. Number one, can it be made tanky enough and pretty much any character can be made tanky enough. You just need like something like spell suppression, ailment immunity and you need to have a decent amount of evasion and a little, a little bit of physical mitigation as, as, as well so you can just run grace determination and you're pretty much going to be set uh, there's not that much that you need actually for in terms of the defense it's not that hard to survive heist because most of the time you're actually not going to be rolling uh, the content that you're running with difficult mods at all uh, so I would recommend something like what I'm playing for example which is a Toxic Rain Raider. Raider is probably the best ascendancy because of the easy spell suppression, permanent phasing which is invaluable in heist, that's the main reason that pushes uh, Raider to be the most uh, powerful uh, ascendancy for heist. And then of course we have the onslaught effect, with onslaught we run faster in the town, we run faster before we kill any monsters and no matter what all of our buffs are still uh, like up all the time and that is the thing that really matters a lot plus it's also very very easy to get ailment avoidance i might make a next video about this character if you're interested uh, but basically that's what you want to look for when you're choosing a build you want something that will run fast like at least 300 movement speed uh, ideally you want to push it to like 500 when you're like min maxing your character and trying to do it uh, you know all the way super strong invest in the heist but 300 will get you there and the character will be fast enough to do heists very comfortably and with a lot of profit. Pretty much any character can be adapted to that. I've done a Guardian who was like a heist uh, runner, so there's a lot of choices, but Raider is like the best one. Uh, then you're gonna have to level your rogues. So we've got all these rogues. In order to get the rogues, first of all, you're going to have to run the ones that you have. So you start with running Karst, that gives you Huck. Then basically the one that you get, that, that's what you run. So you run Huck, which means you can run a lockpicking contract, a brute force, NG or demo, demolition. And then you're going to get Niles. When you get Niles, you run him to get Vindiri. When you get Vindiri, you run him to get Janna. And then you also run separately on the chain uh, of unlocks is running Tibbs to unlock Tulina and then running Tulina to unlock Nanette. This will give you all of the rogues. So you need one, two, three, four, five, six contracts to unlock all of the rogues. Then you're going to have to level, level them up and I recommend using the quest contracts to do that. The reason why you want to do the quest contracts, the green ones that are annoying that you cannot sell or put in your stash or anything that are stuck in your inventory, you want to do them because first of all they're free and secondly they're going to level your rogues and third they're going to unlock the ability for you to drop unique contracts. Unique contracts will never drop for you unless you finished all of the quests. So before you level your rogues I would just do the these unique uh, these quests uh, first thing and then when you do the quest they're never gonna drop again and instead you're gonna be dropping tons of unique contracts the unique contract that is actually worth something is the twins that one at the beginning of the league can sell for any anywhere between 10 and 50 chaos uh, at the uh, the earlier in the beginning of the league the more it's gonna sell for you can la run it also yourself uh, to try to get a leadership price from the boss uh, but that's the contract that is worth something the other ones are not really worth much however if you're at a pinch you know if you need some extra currency you can run them and get a bunch of currency from them however there are more efficient contracts to run than the unique ones so later on as you're trying to min max as you're trying to optimize you're actually not going to be running these unique contracts at all and they sell for virtually nothing um, so let's talk about the rogue 
rogue gear. Once you level the rogues and you level them by simply running them in the contracts and blueprints, so you simply just want to make sure that whatever contract you have, like let's say you find a level one demolition, you find which of your guys has the lowest level of demolition and you run that guy. Basically, when you uh, talk to this uh, NPC, to Adia, you're going to be able to pick um, a character, pick the rogue for the contract and you just pick the one that has the lowest level of the job so you can level them all up as much as possible because eventually you want to have them all maxed out because maxing out the levels increases uh, their abilities right so for example if you look at karst i'll remove this item which gives me items to so you can see it gives me levels so you can see lock picking if it's uh, level five then i have 40 percent less raising of alert level from opening reward chest if i have level six that gives me five extra percent right so the levels also increase the bonuses that your rogues have um, and that's very very important so now let's talk about rogue gear since we're here uh, the most important item that you want to invest in and this is right now gonna cost you let's see uh plus one to level of all jobs on a master lockpick is 100 chaos right now right so this is pretty huge amount but you wonder like is it worth should you get this you can roll these yourself uh, the plus one to level of all jobs but this is something that you want primarily on Gianna that's number one right this is I rolled this one myself all you need is the item that you put here in the middle so this is like the job specific item so you want to pick this item uh, of item level 82 and then you want to roll, roll the plus one to level of all jobs for heist. You can look at PoEDB, for example, at the modifiers here. Uh, I will link PoEDB for heist in the description and you can check yourself. Uh, here you pick this item, right? Regicide disguise tool or any disguise tool or any, you know, tools that uh, they need for the job. Modifiers and we have plus one to level of all jobs required item level 82. Uh, and then for the suffix for other mods if you can get it you would also like to get a job speed as always uh, or like chance to not generate alert level or opening a chest job speed those are the most important things to get um, so that's what you want on Gianna number one the reason why you want to prioritize this on Gianna is because this is going to give you higher level of perception and deception which is going to enable you to run more contracts right as you run the contracts with Gianna you're getting cheaper reveals that have 35 percent discount if you don't have this plus one they only have 30 percent discount right so you're getting increased discount the higher the level of the deception and then you're getting perception level three and counter level four because you have this plus one level from equipment which means you can run more cheaper contracts with her to generate reveals for virtually no currency so Gianna is number one the other characters you want this on is Vindiri this gives you more chance to duplicate items when you open chests and this gives you also option to get him on up to level three engineering contracts which is very very nice you want Vindiri pretty much in every blueprint that you're running because of the fact that he can duplicate the loot right so Vindiri is very very nice the next three characters that you want this plus one to is Karst, Nanette and Tulina those are the only ones that are gonna get Tibbs, Niles, Hack, Isla you don't need the plus one on them but Karst, Nanette and Tulina you do because you want to you always pretty much want to prioritize getting Vindiri, Nanette and Tulina in your blueprints. I'm going to show this when I'm unveiling a blueprint. I'm basically going to go through a contract and a blueprint to show you how to do this. Uh, but Tulina, Nanette and Karst, you want plus one for them because you want to put them in as many blueprints as possible. The next item is something that every single rogue will have, which is going to be cloak and brooch, right? So for the brooch, you want to get chance to duplicate contain basic currency and job speed. Those are the two moves that you want. You can roll these yourself. Ideally, you want to get item level 83 brooch because if you look at this, foliar brooch, if you look at the modifiers, if you want to get chance to duplicate basic currency of the highest tier, you need item level 83. So that's how you can quickly check what you need. You don't need to remember all of this. This is all on PoEDB. Uh, and then we also want the job speed. This requires item level 81. So the best is you can get uh, 18 to 20 increased job speed. And then you can also get the chance to duplicate currency, right? Those are the two important items. The quantity of items dropped doesn't really matter. Time before lockdown doesn't really matter unless you're doing like the lockdown strategy which is another thing that you could do you could for example prioritize running um with isla right and get her to as high level as possible increase a time before lockdown stack the mod that increases time before lockdown on gear and just open all the chests while you're while you're like have the timer to lockdown going right but that's a different st 
strategy. Uh, I prefer lowering uh, the level of raising alert from opening chests as much as possible. So that's why I'm stacking that also on cloaks. So on cloaks, you're looking for reduced raising of alert level from opening chests and increased job speed. Those are again the two modifiers that you want the most, right? For Vindiri, it's also nice to have chance on opening a chest to not generate alert level. That's also a very good modifier that you can get on the cloak. So either that or the reduced uh, alert generation plus job speed. The job speed is very important and you'll see when I run with some of the rogues that I have, the speed that they're going at is actually ridiculous. And when you compare this to you yourself running high, so you're gonna be like wondering, like, what the fuck is, what is this? Are they on crack? Like, how are they so fast? That's because of all of these items um, combined together, right? Plus the levels and so on. Um, and then the last item, so we get a brooch and cloak, basically the same on everybody. Um, and then we've got this, you want the haste, right? So let's look at Gianna, for example. I've got Grant's level 15 haste skill. This is just just the haste aura, just as you have it on the gem. This will affect you as well if you're in the range, right? So you're going to be faster. You're going to have like whatever it is, like 15% increased movement speed or something like that. And the rogue is going to be also faster. They're going to be running faster. So this is something very, very helpful that you want to have on your rogues, the haste on this. And this only rolls on the precise arrowhead. So, um, or actually any arrowhead, but you need the arrowhead. So it doesn't matter what damage the, the rogue is doing or whatever. This doesn't really matter. You just want the arrowhead because it's the only item that can roll the haste aura here so you want the item level 75 so you can roll level 15 haste ideally right so that's what you would like on pretty much all of your rogues as well so that's it that's pretty much cover that pretty much covers the uh the items for the rogues and this is something that you're going to gradually acquire right of course you don't need all of this but as you're playing you're going to gradually acquire this and this is going to add over time to just increase the amount of currency you're making make you do the make the currency faster and faster you're going to be able to open more and more chests and when you're going to be getting some really juicy blueprints this is something that you're really going to notice so let's go now to running contracts this is something that i'm going to show you in practice this, but first how to get them how do you get your contracts how do you get your blueprints there are two main ways number one you farm them yourself number two you get them from uh tft right so tft is a discord where you can basically buy in bulk so you can see here people are selling continuously contracts blueprints uh rogue markers all of that is being sold here you can also just buy them from the trade website but here you can buy stuff in big bulks for example you, want, you can buy 22 deception contracts 10 chaos each right and they're gonna be level 84 81 plus so you can buy a bunch of contracts and blueprints from here or you can source them yourself i prefer to source them myself so the way i do this is i grab a sextant uh which is this one so this is compass uh, which uh, grants you 16 uh, uses or you can get the one that has four uses doesn't really matter but area contains an additional smuggler's cache so if you look at the craft on the map device so let me grab just like a random map um, that will be let's quick to run let's say mesa okay you can chisel this you don't really need to roll this uh, but if you want to sustain maps you are going to have to roll this but let's say we put in a mesa let's say we put in a uh, heist right and this is going to give me two additional smugglers caches for six scales so that means each smugglers cache is going to be worth three chaos right so this it would be worth even if it was more expensive right because if or even if it gave only 10 uses this would be already worth it but it gives 16 uses so the compass is always worth it's always worth to use the sextant um, so that will guarantee you uh, three chests uh, in your maps and then on top of that you can also set up your passive skill tree so that you have these nodes here a uh, chance to contain additional smugglers cache increased amount of blueprints increased stacks of rogue markers then you got another one here casing the joint which gives you chance for 10 percent of your blueprints to be fully revealed which is a huge money save so 10 percent of your blueprints are going to be money revealed and a lot of people ask yo are you getting any fully revealed blueprints yes it's the, the node works if you pick it 10% chance 
to get your blueprints fully revealed. That's how it's going to work on average, right? And also smugglers caches will have 100% chance uh, to drop um, blueprints, like 100% increased. So basically doubled, right? Doubled chance to drop the blueprints. And then we also have these nodes, which basically increase the stack size of rogue markers. And you have a chance to find a bounty target pack, which is basically like a big boss uh, in your map, like big unique monster from heist that is going to drop like 2000 to 3000 rogue markers. Uh, on top of that, I also run just quantity map sustain. I block every single mechanic it's, uh, except for uh, the heist, right? And then I have some extra shrines and I'm grabbing betrayal missions while I'm doing this, right? So I'm just spamming a bunch of maps and getting this. Um, I can show you some statistics if you are interested. For example, running these today, I run 30 maps without the sextant, just with just with this atlas skill tree and just picking the heist on the map device and running the map and picking up the uh, contracts and blueprints and that's it. And I run 30 maps, which means 30 times six, that's 180. So that's 180 chaos investment in terms of the heist. And then I got 12 blueprints. Uh, one of them was revealed, which is within the expected range, right? One in 10 is supposed to re be revealed. So I, I got 12. One of them was revealed. That was a total uh, cost of 222 chaos when I priced them today. And then I got 41,000 uh, coins, which was 90 chaos. And then I got 70 contracts. I priced each of them individually, like every single one, right? The 10, 10 chaos for deception, for example, three chaos for lock picking, and so on and so on. Uh, and that came uh, down to together being 572 chaos so i invested 180 chaos and i got 572 chaos worth of contracts blueprints and coins out of these 30 maps so it's definitely worth sourcing them yourself especially because you're going to be getting some of them fully revealed you're going to be getting some of them very very strong with lots of rewards that i'm going to show you in a moment right so let's go back to the rogue harbor and let me show you some of the blueprints, right? So for example, we get blueprints that have like eight currency rewards and seven um, divination card rewards uh, with replicas, right? This is a really, really good blueprint and you would probably pay premium. You'd pay like, if you wanted to buy this from trade or from someone who was aware of how much reward is on this, they would probably sell it for like maybe 50 chaos, maybe 60 chaos, but you still can pull out much more than that from this blueprint. But let's first focus on the contract. So now you know how to get them. You either farm them yourself with this method or you get them from the trade or you get them from the TFT. So how do you run them? Um, usually you want to focus on Gianna first, right? So you want to go, for example, type uh, deception, right? Then you can do this, you can type perception and then you can type counter, okay? And this will highlight all of the deception, perception and counter. And you just gotta remember that Gianna can do all of the deception. She can do counter thermaturgy up to level four. So she cannot do the level fives. And then perception, she can do up to level three but she cannot do four and five. That is if you have the plus one item, which I do, right? So we can simply look for these counter, counter, perception four. So she cannot run that counter, perception three, perception three. And we go next page, perception, 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 deception, perception, deception, deception five, deception. She can run all of them next page and so on and so on. You can see how many Jana contracts I have, right? So these are all, all generating reveals. And if you're wondering how much is a reveal worth, a reveal is worth roughly 2000 coins, which is somewhere between like four or five chaos, more like five chaos, right? So a reveal is worth around five chaos and then you're getting also coins while finishing the contract. So something like six chaos. That's roughly how much your reveal is worth. So these contracts have guaranteed value of six scales, even if I don't get anything out of them, right? If I get absolutely nothing out of them, that's still the value. You do want to scour them though, right? You want to scour them because it's absolutely no benefit to you if you are being uh, going to run them um, rolled, right? In any way. So in terms of contracts, blueprints are slightly different, but in terms of contracts, you want to scour them. So I got a deception contract here, so I'm going to run it. You simply con uh, control click. I'm going to teach you also a little bit about efficiency, right? So let's say I have these contracts here. So I'm going to show you how I would open two contracts quickly in a row, right? So I would, I would get a bunch of them. I would have my coins in here. I would have uh, this set up like this, right? Or maybe have them on the right side. You can also set this here so it doesn't like uh, conflict with the inventory. I have some of them that I didn't actually 
scour there we go sometimes you might have them corrupted and then you cannot scour them but that's okay and then let's make sure i have deception here let's make sure i have like another deception let's say this one okay all right so i've got something like this and then basically you control click on adia control click the contract click once select jenna sign the contract and then basically i'm going to show you how i run these contracts and because people will have a lot of questions about which chest do you open which chest do you not open and so on right so we're going to run in here you can kill the monsters you don't need to kill the monsters so immediately what i'm doing as i'm running i'm looking right i'm looking at the minimap and what i'm seeing here is i see two chests that have um, divination cards, which is your priority. Big chests with divination cards are among the most valuable things you can get. So this is something I definitely want to open. Here we have armor, which I don't really want to open. And here armor, which I also don't really want to open. So this, I know from experience, this will take like maybe one third of my alert level. So I have the rest of the alert level to play with for opening small chests, right? Sometimes uh, this is also close to the beginning. So I know I have still a lot of uh, small chests to open so I know I don't have to open too many early on so I can just open a few and you can also open them and just run right you don't need to wait for the loot to fall you can pick it up on the way back right so you can do that and then you want to use your hotkeys right you want to use your hotkeys because you want to be faster I'll show you some tricks with that as well but as soon as I'm like this far away I can press my hotkey which if you hover it's gonna show you in the brackets so for me it, it's control one by default I think it's V right so whatever it is set it to something very comfortable so just like as as you're running you're pressing this hotkey and she starts automatically doing her stuff right so you can this is where you like kill monsters because you're waiting for the door to open you're opening this you're opening this you're picking up eight stack days which is like 10c 12c something like that and just keep running you can open another one and then you're running to the end right so we're just opening the doors opening the doors not fighting anything now i'm fighting stuff because i'm opening the door i can open this chest as well because i know that my timer is long enough that i will be able to get to the target before it runs out so we can get an extra small chest chance to get extra currency you pick up the target and because this is a deception there is no doors on the way back that's why these contracts are also worth so much and you simply just run through it and don't worry about anything just run out of it and then as i run out of it i enter the portal i immediately control click put another one click this click this i sell the target accept go back portal opens and i go and do the next one right so that's basically how you do this it's very very simple and this is another one where we have something that is worth opening so we've got for example uh, the the harby rewards are actually not worth that much right in terms of the rewards that are worth the most definitely currency definitely uh, divination cards and then fragments is also pretty good metamorph is also another decent one uh, metamorph uh, the, the what are they called um catalysts right they're called catalysts are pretty expensive this league some of them are like 10 kales each the ones that give you resistances so that is something that is definitely worth opening the blight ones the delirium ones are not really worth opening map uh, rewards are pretty okay like if you have nothing else better to open then map rewards are fine and you can definitely do that um, and then other than that nothing really right the, the harvey used to be really good but it's not good anymore right it used to be really really good because you would get tons of uh shards for what are they called um fragments of exalt right exalted shards but you don't get them you know you, i mean you still get them but exalts are not worth much so that's why they're not worth uh, much currency so that's how you run the contracts right this is how this is what you want to do with the contracts um and as you can see, so I ran two contracts. I got a bunch of coins. I got two reveals. Uh, so that was worth like what? Like 12, maybe like 15, 16 chaos. Um, and then we've got this uh, plus this. This is worth, what are they worth? Like one and a half in big bulk. Maybe you can sell them for. So that'll be like 12 plus six, like 18. So we've got 30 something chaos right and these take very very quick to run right and they're very very quick so that's what you want to do with contracts right once you run the jana ones the ones you can run are also lock picking contracts they're also decent because they have fragment and currency rewards both of which are very good and karst allows you to open all kinds of small chests so that's the another one that you want to run uh, after that i would probably not bother with running any of them i would just sell them um 
for maybe like one or two chaos each in bulk and then you also before you do that want to check for uh priceless right so you want to go through these and see if you have anything priceless there we go we got a priceless one so if you see um on top heist target golden slave idol in brackets priceless this is going to give you a ton of um, rogue markers maybe like 2000 3000 markers and then there's also precious the precious ones uh, are also something that we can run because they also are going to give you a bunch of markers right so that's how you basically run contracts this is pretty much everything that you need to know about that let's now talk about the blueprints right so for blueprints people always ask which blueprints to run and there is no simple answer to this so first i'm going to talk about the end rewards the highest targets we got enchanted armaments we've got uh, thieves trinkets or currency we've got replicas or experimented items and then we've also got unusual gems right so unusual gems are pretty good it's a pretty good reward uh, it's one of the better ones if not the best um, thieves trinkets and currency are decent uh, they give you consistent currency you're almost always always guaranteed something decent like a couple delirium orbs like three four delirium orbs or a stack of div cards or a stack of chaos um, and sometimes you're going to have a decent trinket or something like that and there's a chance in the thieves trinkets or currency to get the trinket that is worth a lot of currency which is currently like 70 divines 80 divines something like that for the one that converts um chaos to divine orbs right this is a trinket that, that if you can afford it is definitely worth getting you're gonna get a bunch of divines and then you can resell it and basically you just made pure profit right in terms of the trinket i currently have the three percent uh real to divine i actually found this trinket but it costs something like it you hundred chaos maybe up to one divine even if it costs one divine is definitely worth getting i probably got like maybe two or three divines throughout the course of this league so far out of it which already would have paid for itself and then i can sell it and make further profit so the other ones that you want to get are basically the ones that convert um, transmutations and augmentations to chaos or have a chance to duplicate currency those are the ones that you want uh, those are like the cheap ones you can get them for like 10 chaos or 20 chaos or something like that right um, especially if they have like two mods that's really nice like two mods that convert augmentations and transmutations to chaos that's a cheap one that you can get or this one that converts regal orbs to divines but the the holy grail is this which is one percent chance of chaos to drop as divine orb instead this one is much more powerful because there is much more chaos that drops in your contracts and blueprints than regal orbs the regal orbs are very rare that's why this one is not so good um so that's when it comes to the trinket um also the trinket slot is unlocked the first time you do the contract with the thieves uh, trinkets or currency so let's pick one of these let's pick the thieves trinkets of, or currency um let's pick a uh, random contract let's see thieves trinkets of currency um these ones don't have that many good rewards these ones have slightly better ones um but i want to pick something that is going to have them okay this has demolition actually uh okay that's fine um but i want to i want i want to showcase a little bit more in terms of um let's see lockpick agility demolition okay let's run this one okay let's run this one the reason why I'm so picky here is because um, I want to I want to make like showcase something specific. But basically, your choice should be dictated by the amount of rewards and the end reward combined together, right? So the rewards that you're looking for are number one, currency. Number two, divination cards, right? Uh, so you see this first one and then the last one. And then also metamorph is pretty good and fragments are pretty good right the 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 currency and the div cards are like s tier and then fragments and uh, metamorph and maybe maps are like a tier you know something like that and the rest ones are not worth opening at all the rest ones are trash and you don't really care so let's uh go to this guy reveal blueprint details and here's what you want to do you want to switch to Gianna. You can see reveals i got 45 percent discount here uh, because of the plus the levels and everything so we use this to reveal and you can see this is almost half of the cost right this is almost 50 percent discount which means i'm saving almost 2000 coins per every single wing revealed or like two around 2000 coins per wing revealed right so i'm revealing this one and as you can see 
uh, when you hover, you can see how many rewards are there. Why is this useful, right? You might want to fracture. Uh, you might want to f fracture your blueprints. If you have a blueprint uh, that is really, really good, like I have, for example, one of these here, right? Like there's something like this that I have an even better one. But let's say you have like seven currency rewards, six div card rewards, map fragments, all like good stuff, right? And you can put good rogues on it and so on. You can fracture this because this would be worth more. However, fracturing will unreveal it, right? So you cannot reveal it and then have fractured and have two two revealed ones. You you have to fracture it first, and, and maybe you can reveal it, but it's gonna become unrevealed. So you have to um, reveal both of them after fracturing. Uh, but you can either fracture or split beast, um, and it's gonna give you a couple of really really good blueprints to run. And this is like a really good way of getting decently priced blueprints that are extremely good in terms of the rewards that they're giving, right? So this is something that I recommend doing with the blueprints that are like this thing, right? There's like eight currency rewards, seven div card rewards, two map rewards, one fragment. This is really really good, right? And also replicas or experimented items is a decent. Uh, decent base right because people want a lot of the experiment bases this league for example the dagger and so on but let's go back to revealing right so what we're doing is Gianna we're revealing both of these wings and then we're switching back to Wakano and we're using them on the smaller ones right so you have to keep something in mind you have to keep in mind how many of these can you realistically open right I would say on average you can like open three Depends on the rogues that you're getting, but optimistically you could open up to five maybe, or you can open it maybe even like six rooms if you have the best combo of rogues and very well rolled blueprint and good gear on your rogues. But on average, probably you should aim for like three, right? So I have the currency, there's nothing else good except for the metamorph, so I'm happy to open these two metamorph as well. Then we've got one div card, one div card, we can open the third div card. And then we've got one, two, three currency, and then we got fragments as well, right? So this is what I would do in terms of revealing. Everything else is worthless. Never reveal like the escape routes or any of these other rewards that I didn't mention because they're not good. Then we're going to the planning room. And you want to do like multiple contracts at once because that makes it faster. And here's your priority. Number one priority, Vindiri, always, right? So number one, Vindiri. Number two, Karst, right? So number two, Karst, if we can pick Karst. Number three, we've got either Nanette or Tulina, right? Those are the rogues. So this is a very, very good combo. I'm going to be able to open a lot of chests and I'm going to have a chance to duplicate them, right? Then we've got, again, um, Nanette, Karst, uh, Vindiri. Very, very good combo. And then we've got, again, great combo in here we can put Nanette so Nanette has 23% less raising of alert and uh, Tulina has 16 right but she also has a chance to find extra uh, targets but we don't care about that I would rather get Nanette for, to open more chests so this is really really good this is like a prime example of the exact rogues that you want to get this is the perfect combination of rogues you don't need anybody else if you were not able to pick these guys right the next rogues in order would be to pick Tibbs because Tibbs can open chests. So let me pick Tibbs somewhere in here so that I can like showcase him, okay? Because I wanna show something with Tibbs as well, right? So let's pick Tibbs and I'm gonna showcase a bunch of stuff in here. So we're gonna be able to open like everything here. Um, so we'll show Tibbs from this one. And then do you roll them or do you not roll them? Really depends, right? I don't actually need to roll this one, right? I could perfectly run this scoured and it wouldn't matter. However, if you want to maximize the amount of chests that you want to open, you roll them for the reduced uh, alert, right? So you can use uh, binding orbs, for example. Uh, although if you're running heist, you're going to have tons of alchemists. You're never going to complain for lack of alchemists. Um, so you want to roll, you're looking at the um, alert level reduction. This is the mod that you want. It's like third from the bottom on the implicits, right? So it's like alert re level reduction. This is what you care about, right? The item quantity, rarity doesn't matter. Time before lockdown, maximum alive reinforcements doesn't matter. The mods, as long as you can run it 
don't really matter that much, right? So you, you can maximum get up to like 30, right? So let's try to see if we can get something really strong. So 25, this is pretty good. We got monsters, uh, movement speed, projectiles, less evasion. The really bad ones are like minus max to resistances. I never run minus max to resistances on these. And the temp change is pretty bad uh, because it's just annoying. Uh, and then I also never run something like um, the alert is triggered immediately after, uh, you know, the lockdown triggered immediately after the alert or something like that, right? So never never run anything like that or like uh, reduced, um, like the alert keeps ticking like per, per second or whatever. That's also something that I never, never run, right? So let's see. Monsters take reduced damage from crits. All damage from monsters ignite. I don't crit. I'm element immune. Guards deal increased damage doesn't matter a uh, chance to avoid impale less regen less effect of courses this is okay right so we got 29% alert level reduction so we could open so many chests in here so this is going to be unusual gems I'm going to also going to show you how to price them um, very very quickly so we're going to go in here and just open the heist And then I'm basically gonna go and show you what we do, right? So we go to the first wing, and again, we're scouting for the rewards that we get, right? So I know that I have like three good rooms in here, right? And all of them are the div card rooms. So I'm gonna go first into the room number one, and I'm gonna see how much alert am I generating. And look at this, by the way. I open two, let me, I open two rooms at the same time. Let me show you, right? So we got one job here, which is agility, and then another job, which is demolition, right? So if I want, I can use I can stand here and I can press my hotkey twice, right? For me, it's control one and I can do both of them at the same time, right? So I can do this and both of the rogues are doing it at the same time, right? You don't need to wait. You don't need to do it one at a time. You can do both at the same time, right? So this is something that can potentially save you a lot of time. Once you get used to this, you're just going to be like clicking this and running through it and not waiting for anything, right? It's going to be much, much faster, right? Um, so yeah, you want to kill stuff while you're opening it, while they're revealing stuff. Uh, you want to just not stand in mines like these red things that are uh, flashing lights. You never want to stand in that because it explodes for a huge amount of damage. That's the main thing that can pretty much kill you in heist, right? So I still have so much in terms of the um, in terms of the alert, right? You can see it's only very low uh, and I opened already a bunch of chests. So that means I'm free to open even more. I'm free to probably open this as well. Uh, which are not great, but you can drop like ancient orbs from them. Ancient orbs are decent. Um, you can drop uh, Horizon Exalted Shards. Uh, Harvey Scarabs are not worth that much, but that's okay. Uh, you don't need to kill these. You can just like run past them. Doesn't really matter. They don't do that much damage. Uh, or just run until the next one. Open this and do the other job at the same time. You can see this guy is doing this job. This guy is doing this job, right? So we don't need to wait. We can just let them uh, do their jobs at the same time opening this eight stack decks which is huge it's like 11 12 chaos or something like that we don't need to pick up the other stuff All right let's open more of these small chests because we have tons of alert so until we get up to like almost triggering the alert we can keep opening the chests um, because sometimes really good stuff drops out of them. And now we've got the gems, right? So gems are, uh, I think there is a tool for pricing them, but I'm not sure like how it actually works. And, and I've never seen anybody use it, uh, but there is some kind of a tool for using this, but you can actually price it pretty quickly, right? So what do you want to do if you're running these gem, uh, if you're running these gem ones, you will learn them over time. So you will, you will progressively learn them and then you won't have to check every single time. But you can simply open uh, three trade windows, right? This is what I do, right? I open three trade windows and I set, um, I set uh, anomalous in the first one, right? Just like alphabetically. I set anomalous on the first one. Then I set the um, divergent, right? And then I set the phantasmal, right? And the third one, right? So I just have three trade windows open like this, right? Th three trade windows open like this. And then I basically go and I look a divergent tornado shot. So I just go to the second one, type uh, tornado, tornado shot, search. And then you have a good view. You might wanna also do this so you can see as many as possible. It's like, okay, 20C, right? And we go next one. We go uh, divergent storm brand, chance to chain additional time. We type uh, storm B, storm brand, okay? This is worth 
like eight chaos, which is usually the worthless ones. That's how many they are worth. Anomalous Morton Strike, uh, Anomalous Convocation, so buff grants movement speed. Anomalous Summon Flame Golem, right? So we can do go to Anomalous Flame Golem, right? And then we can go in here and be like Tensi. All right, cool. I'm gonna go pick up the tornado shot because that was worth like 20 chaos or something, right? So then we just run out, don't care about anything. As they're opening the doors, we're just gonna do this. And then if there are small chests on the way, look how quickly he's doing it. He smashed this so quickly, right? So Tibbs can open this so quickly. If you're fast enough, you can actually run through these and that's fine. Look how quickly he's gonna smash it. Look how quickly he's running to it and smashing it. So this is something that you can do once you have a bunch of gear on your rogues. They're so quick at opening doors, so quick at running to them, and it's very, very nice. Uh, this is something I don't need. So that's basically how you run this, right? Vindiri is going to be here, and he's going to duplicate my loot. So I'm going to show you this. I'm going to open this. Vindiri is just going to detonate stuff, and I want to show you a trick with Vindiri as well. I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to run to the metamorph or the currency ones. And uh, with Vindir, you can do like a little animation cancel. Sometimes he bugs as well. But okay, we got two chests here that are openable with lockpicking. Actually, never mind. That's not Vindiri. So let's just open these. Gonna pick up a little bit of currency. Then we're gonna move to the next one. This is traps. Okay, so here, here we got demolition stuff. So for Vindiri or anybody who does this like demolition thing, right? What you can do is you can click your hotkey and he's, he's going to start opening this and you're going to see a progress bar and then he's going to go backwards and he's going to set a shield of energy and it's going to wait and then it's going to detonate and maybe he's even going to bug out and try to run to a different location and do it again, right? You don't have to wait for all of that. You wait until the progress bar finishes and then you tell him to open the next one and this is going to automatically open, right? So you do this. The progress finishes, you click on this one, this one already opens, right? You don't need to wait for the animation. You can cancel the animation by telling him to do the next job as, as soon as the progress bar finished, right? So we're gonna move away from this. All right, so that's basically it, right? Let me run out so that I can continue explaining other stuff, but that's pretty much how you run the blueprints, right? And you can exit the blueprint. If I exit here, un unless I've triggered the alert in the last room, Right? Unless I triggered alert in the, every single of the wings, every single one of the wings, I can return there and I can continue doing it, right? Or I can just go here, I can empty my inventory because sometimes you get a bunch of stuff, right? Especially when you're doing like the bases or whatever. We can drop this all here and drop a bunch of currency, right? This already like paid for the whole blueprint. Um, and that's basically how you do that. So hopefully this explains to you what you can do in the blueprints and contracts let's now talk about the last thing which is the infinite heist so how do you infinite heist why would you do it and how does it work so infinite heist is basically a strategy uh, where you use uh, leveling leveling and deleveling which i'm not gonna do on this character but if you wait actually i'm gonna be stuck with this book but i'm just gonna show you if you sell a scroll of wisdom and scour you get a book of regression right so when you use that book it's gonna reduce your level by one right so you can you can literally de-level your character by one level and when you do that it counts as the same as your leveling it kind of counts basically as change of the level whenever your level changes uh, this guy, uh, or rather this guy who sells uh, contracts, is going to reset, right? Every single shop in the game for you is going to reset when you change level, up or down, doesn't really matter, right? So what you're doing is, at the beginning of the league, you want to get to like level um, 59 and start buying them, right? You want to start buying the good ones. So I have a, I have a little write down here for myself, like a cheat sheet that I made for myself at the beginning of this league. So... Um, at 59, I started buying lockpicking and demolition contracts, right? You want to buy lockpicking and demolition. And then I also wanted to buy one of each of these contracts that I needed in order to unlock all of my rogues so that I can quickly unlock them. So the first thing I did was unlocking all of the rogues and focusing on lockpicking and demolition contracts. And I bought them at level, they cost uh, one uh, chance orb. Sometimes they cost an alchemy orb if they're actually rolled, right? So you're getting these chance orbs from uh, the lockpicking. So you're going to be self-sustaining them. Uh, and also you're getting... Um, you're getting fusings, right? Which you can also sell for chance orbs, I think. Uh, let me see, let me just confirm. Uh, if you're like in Act 10 and you wanna buy some chance orbs, 
they cost where are they chance of fusing yes and also you can buy fusings for jewelers so you're going to be getting jewelers you're going to be getting fusings and you're going to be getting chance orbs, and that's going to be enough to sustain that right and also chance orbs, if in a pinch you can uh, trade them for a scouring orb if you need scouring orb to d level but here is basically what you're going to do you're going to start buying them when you're like 59 because that's when you can buy contracts from that are level 60 which means you can do a chaos recipe with items from them you get to like level 62 or 61 actually as a player and then you can buy contracts that are level 62 and the contracts that are level 62 can start dropping really good uniques so for example dark scorn which is a very popular unique this league it's a level 62 so you need to get to, uh, to you need to run level 62 or above contracts in order to drop it same with something like deaths of same with something like cold iron point and the goal is to run in a loop contracts of item level 60 2 and 63 and you're gonna be running lock picking and demolition demolition are the best ones but you need to run lock picking in order to sustain the scour and chance orbs um, and basically you just keep repeating that and you're running the lock picking you're running the demolition so here's how the loop looks like once you finish uh, uh usually like you get to act 10 you uh, go to um, the ossuary right you grab your last trial you do the lab and you're like level 61 you don't finish the campaign you don't kill kitava because you don't want to wait you don't want to like fix extra resistances for no reason and then you're level 61 and you go to uh to heist and you just sit in heist forever you basically run it you 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 buy the contracts you have like few lock picking or demolition contracts you run them you level up shop resets you buy the lock picking and demo contracts you de-level yourself shop resets again again you buy the lock picking and demo contracts as many as you can and then you run them and as you run them, you're going to level up eventually. And it's going to be up about like four or five contracts, whatever, maybe six contracts, probably less, maybe closer to like five. Um, and then you're going to level again, right? So you're going to buy the new contracts from the shop, de-level yourself, shop resets again, you buy them again and just keep running them. And you can permanently run them. And at the beginning of the league, this is the most currency you can possibly make. At the beginning of the league, nobody will be making more currency than you, which means you will be able to afford anything. Any single item that you want at the beginning of the league, like let's say it's a cold iron point, or let's say it's a dark scorn, or anything that a lot of people want, and it's gonna be like a unique that keeps increasing with pri with time, right? Because people are getting more chaos. And let's say the top one percent currently has 50 chaos, so the item is gonna be priced at 50 chaos, right? Because that's how much the person can get. But if nobody has 100, it's not gonna be priced at 100. But as people are getting to 100, then it's gonna keep rising in price for the in the first day. So you need to be at the top if you wanna be getting these uniques very, very early, right? And you can do that by doing heist. So that's why heist is super, super uh, powerful early on to get the, all the gear that you need. You can literally enter maps with six link, uh, some uh, build enabling uniques, uh, the best rares that you can buy for a few chaos, like you can buy chaos, like 10 chaos, you can spend 10 chaos on like really good rares and have your character with like cap resistances, spell suppression, uh, build enabling uniques, six link and anything else you need and you can just go into maps like that, right? And never struggle. And you're gonna catch up to the people who are pushing into red maps on trash gear without any currency. They're struggling to make currency. You already made the currency. You're gonna catch up to them and you're gonna be at the same level as them. When they finish Atlas, you're gonna finish the Atlas and you're both gonna be with the finished Atlas at about the same time, but you're gonna have more currency and you wouldn't have struggled. So that's the power of the infinite heist. How long you wanna do it for? This is up to you. This depends on the economy. For example, uh, if you care about buying divine orbs, right? I was early on investing in divines and I was able to buy like six divines and then I was like, okay, I got six divines in a few hours. I'm okay with that. I'm going to progress uh, into the maps and actually I didn't need to really spend any extra divines. I just spent the extra little bit of chaos that I made on top of that and I progressed to the maps and I had this extra currency that appreciated over time, right? Because the first divines I bought were for like 30, 40 chaos, right? So I bought a couple of divines for like 30, 40 chaos, and then I bought them for like 40 and then 50 and then 70 and the 90 chaos, right? That was like the most expensive divine that I bought uh, and I bought six of them and then they appreciated over time. And so I made some extra currency by doing this. So that's basically the infinite heist. If you have any other heist questions, hopefully you don't, hopefully I covered everything, uh, but let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much guys for watching and see you next time. Bye-bye.